When archaeologists dug up old Viking settlements in Greenland and northern Iceland, they found something that just didn't make sense. Homes that had stood for hundreds of years, through strong winds, ice and hunger, had building features no one could explain. Later, in the early 1900s, when people tried to set up new towns in the Arctic, engineers from Scandinavia tried to copy these methods for their own buildings. But the results were strange. The Viking homes stayed warmer, used almost no fuel, and created their own cosy climate inside. The engineers tried to copy it and failed. The design was so good that by the mid-1900s, government officials quietly made certain parts of it secret knowledge, only for military and research use. What was this quiet trick the Vikings knew? And why was it ordered never to be taught again? This isn't just a story. It's one of the most amazing real examples of old-time environmental engineering the North ever created. The Vikings learned to build homes that breathed warmth and quiet. The Arctic isn't just cold, it's full of movement. The air moves, the snow gets packed down, and the ground itself can shift when it freezes. The Vikings understood that stiff, unmoving homes wouldn't last here. Instead of sealing their homes up tight like modern houses, they found a way to let them breathe. This quiet design wasn't about sound. It was about air. The method used what we now call passive thermal convection. The longhouse walls were built in layers that allowed warm air from the fireplace to rise through the building, while cold air was slowly pulled in from the bottom of the outer turf walls. This created a gentle, constant flow of air that kept the air moist, kept the temperature steady, and, most importantly, stopped water from building up and mould from growing which was exactly what ruined most later European shelters in the Arctic. Archaeologists found these uh, thin channels and gaps purposely built into the turf layers and between stones, tiny vents that acted like natural air controls. The system worked silently, you know, keeping the air inside fresh without any noticeable drafts. And when modern engineers tested rebuilt versions, they found the system could actually keep the inside at a steady 18 degrees Celsius, even when it was minus 25 degrees outside, using only a little bit of firewood. The cleverness of this method really was in how simple it was. The Vikings didn't block out the cold. They balanced it. They let the building exchange air at a speed that created stability. It was nature in balance, built from watching things happen, rather than inventing something new. During the late 1930s and 1940s, Scandinavian engineers looked at these Viking methods again while designing Arctic stations and bunkers in the north. What they found, well, it surprised them. Homes using the old turf airflow ideas needed almost no outside energy. They stayed dry, quiet and warm, without mechanical fans or constant heating. This naturally caught the eye of defence departments and energy groups, especially during those times when fuel was hard to get during the war. Research teams in Norway and Sweden tried to make the design official, using it for modern shelters. But when the results showed that homes built with turf and self-moving air could do better than barracks heated with fuel, the technology was quietly moved into secret civil defence papers. Why hide it? because if everyone started using such designs, it would have hurt entire heating industries that relied on coal and later oil. 
A home that needed no furnace, no fuel, and no upkeep was seen as just too damaging to the economy. So the knowledge was taken in by military and polar research groups, while regular builders were told it was unstable and couldn't be copied. The funny thing is that it could be copied. It just needed patience, local materials, and a willingness to think like a Viking instead of a modern engineer. So, let's break down how this method actually worked in real life. A Viking longhouse or an Arctic farm, well, it usually started with a deep stone base. This base acted as both a way for water to drain and, interestingly enough, a kind of heat battery. The stones would soak up heat from the central fireplace during the day and then slowly let it out throughout the night. Above that, you'd find the turf layers. Now, these weren't just random piles of dirt. No, they were carefully stacked living bricks of grass, roots and soil. Each was cut into squares and laid with the grass growing in different directions. Every turf block trapped these tiny pockets of air, which gave the wall both insulation and, you know, a surprising amount of flexibility. Between every few layers, the Vikings would put in thin layers of dried seaweed or straw. These materials created tiny air channels, and that formed a quiet airflow system that actually made the whole building breathe. The roof completed the system. Instead of a steep slope like later European designs, Viking roofs were low and heavy curved with bent wood or whalebone, then covered with moss and turf. This combination stopped sound from carrying in strong winds and trapped heat within a slow-moving air circulation cycle. The home stayed acoustically quiet, no whistling draughts, no echoing spaces, and evenly warm. In practice, this meant the fire could be reduced to glowing coals overnight without the inside temperature dropping sharply. A family could survive Arctic conditions with less than a third of the wood used by later settlers. It's no exaggeration to say this was a self-regulating warm environment centuries before modern insulation science existed. For those interested in living without relying on public utilities or surviving in cold weather, the Viking method is still very practical. The first step is building into the earth, using the ground's steady temperature as your base. Even a partial dugout, about a third below ground, can greatly reduce heat loss. Next, let's focus on layered insulation. Instead of using man-made materials, you should use natural layers. Packed soil, straw and sand can. Well, act like turf for keeping heat in quite well. Lay each layer in different directions to trap air and prevent direct paths for heat to escape. If you're building a roof, remember to add weight and density. The goal here isn't lightness, it's mass. Heavy materials, you see, hold and release warmth slowly. Finally, control airflow naturally. Instead of sealing everything up tight, include a few narrow vents low on the wall and one near the roof peak. This will allow warm air to rise and escape gradually, pulling in just enough fresh air to keep the circulation going. Test it by lighting a small fire and watching how the smoke moves. It should rise cleanly, not linger. Once you find the right balance, the system pretty much takes care of itself.
Well, this method, you see, can be used not only for living quarters, but also for root cellars' workshops or even animal shelters. The main idea, ah yes, it's universal. Keeping the temperature steady through natural balance, not forced heating. What makes this method so amazing is that it was never based on written plans. It was passed down through watching and learning from others, until colonial leaders and modern engineers dismissed it as old-fashioned. Yet when those same methods were rediscovered and studied scientifically, they proved better than many methods from the 20th century. That's why this quiet Viking home technique was eventually hidden, not because it failed, but because it worked too well. It showed that humans once lived in harmony with their surroundings, using nothing but local materials, gut feeling, and a design sense sharpened by survival. Today, the lesson is just as important as ever. In a time of energy problems and overly complicated housing, the Viking idea of self-sustaining warmth reminds us. Efficiency doesn't always come from technology. Sometimes it comes from listening to the land itself. If you found this deep dive into Viking environmental mastery valuable, subscribe to In the Beginning, share this with your fellow history and survival enthusiasts, and stay tuned for more forgotten technologies that work so well they had to be hidden. The past still holds the answers. We just have to stop ignoring them.